Hello, Facebook. I hope everyone's having a great day today. If you are watching the live, please make sure you say hello or comment to be entered into our monthly drawings. If you are watching the replay, please just hashtag replay or say hello. Let us know you're there. You'll be entered in our drawings as well. Okay, just gonna pull this up here. Awesome. Well, I am Tracy Allen. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm really excited today to show you all a beautiful world, which is part of the World of Good um, suite that we just introduced in the brand new 2020-2021 catalog. So, super excited to share that with you today. I have some beautiful cards we're gonna make. So first let me show you this suite, because it is amazing. So when Stampin' Up! does a suite of products, what they do is they're gonna give you pretty much everything that coordinates with those products. So once I saw this suite, I was like, oh, I have to have this one. Um, it reminds me of travel. It's very gender neutral. It's even a little more masculine, which I really like. Um, there's lots of great, um, just lots of great detail to it. So uh, you're gonna get this amazing paper and we'll be playing with that paper today. You can see in the new catalog, it actually gives you all the colors that coordinate. So I super love this idea, being able to see the different colors that I might need to purchase. And we're gonna be using some cinnamon cider, some bumblebee and some of that misty moonlight. Oh, no bumblebee today. Misty moonlight, early espresso and some cider today. And then definitely using that new brass color. So I'll show you that. So in the collection, you're gonna get the stamp set, you're also going to get the die set. You're going to get the Memories and More card pack. So if you haven't seen our Memories and More pack, they're awesome. They're great for journaling. They're great for card making. They're great for your scrapbooks. I think this is a wonderful set to do a travel album. In fact, I plan on using all of this for my travel albums. Um, you're going to get that beautiful specialty designer series paper that's all foiled in the brass, which is so pretty. You're going to get the antiqued corners and slides. These look amazing on cards. I love how they go with the ribbon as well. You're going to get the old world embossing folder. So we're going to use that today and I'll show you that you're going to get the suede, the faux suede trim in early espresso. It's a new type of ribbon. It is awesome. I uh, can't wait. We'll show you that today as well. And then those brass foil sheets. So all of that comes together um, for that $104.50. And that's a discounted price. Remember, um, anytime they put a suite together, anytime they give you a bundle, you get that 10% off of that um, bundle price. So it's a great deal. And we're going to play with that a little bit today. Super fun. Oh, I really want to make a bunch of these cards here. I run out of time. <laughs> Can't do it all. All right, but today let's start with our Adventure Awaits card. So I love, love, love this card. Um, I did get the idea off Pinterest, but I definitely made it my own. I think one of the things that we forget is that um, you don't have to come up with the ideas in your head by yourself, right? Uh, oftentimes I'll grab a stamp set and I'll go, yeah, I don't know what to do with that. Or I really want to make a really cute birthday card, but, and I want to use this set, but wh what do I do with it? And so I use Pinterest a lot. I will Google the, or the Pinterest, the name of the stamp set, and then I'll put, um, Stampin' Up! next to it or card making, and you just get tons of ideas. So when I pulled up, um, this stamp set, I found some really beautiful ideas online, and this was one of them. Um, similar to this, I kind of tweaked it and made it my own. I think that's the nice thing about seeing someone else's work is you can kind of tweak it and make it your own. So, there's the inside of our card. So we're gonna start with that one today. And to start, you're gonna need a card base. So we're gonna use Early Espresso, and I use this a lot. This is probably my 
one of my go-to colors. I always keep a full pack with me because, right, it's, it's one of those things I go through quite a bit. So this is actually cut by 11 um, by four and a quarter. So we're gonna cut it just a little bit different. And I'm gonna use a bone folder here to straighten that out. There we go. And then I'm gonna cut the designer series paper and I've already done that. So I chose one of our pieces of paper. It's so hard to choose. We've got some great designer paper. This one was just kind of an old map. Um, on the, the back it's great too. And it's the hardest part. That's why you gotta get the whole pack because you, you wanna use it on a bunch of projects. Um, so we're gonna adhere that right to the card front. And that's gonna be our background. I'm using our new seal adhesive. So this is really nice. It's a nice sticky adhesive. It definitely goes on and stays on. Uh, so if you're looking for a product that is not going to go anywhere, once you put it on your paper, this is it. And I'm just going to center that right on to the cart front. Go. And then I'm going to set that aside. Getting at my directions here. I'll make sure I give you the right measurements. So that was four by five and a quarter is that designer series paper there. Then I'm going to start making the smaller square. So to make the smaller square, I'm going to start with another piece of that espresso. And I'm going to cut that to three by four and a quarter. So I've got that. Set that aside. Then I'm going to cut a piece of our cinnamon cider. So this is one of our brand new ink colors. Love, love, love this color. Um, Super fun, I actually opened the ink pad last night to start playing with it because I had another card I was making with it. Um, but I'm really loving this brown. I didn't even know I needed th this color in my life until they gave it to me, right? I feel that way about a lot of the colors we get from Stampin' Up. I didn't know I needed it, but now that I have it, I definitely need it. I need it for a long time. So we're gonna take this one and we're gonna emboss it. So we're gonna use this really awesome new folder this is called the Old World Paper. Old World Paper, it's our 3D embossing folder. And I love it because it gives you that tattered look, right? I remember, yeah, I've been doing this a really, really long time. Um, so I remember taking paper and trying to get that look on my scrapbook page or on a card. And I would take a piece of paper, I would wad it up into a ball. I would then spread it out and then I might take um, like an ink distressor and kind of just ink it a little bit to, around, especially around the edges to give it that tattered paper look. Well, guess what? I have a folder now for that. So I will not be crunching paper up anymore, thankfully. Uh, so I'm just gonna run this through really quick. It doesn't matter where on your folder you're gonna run it. Um, it's just gonna give you such a nice look. So one second, I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine over here or embosser whatever you've got all right once I run that through you'll see I don't know how well you can see with the light but I love it because you can use the embossed side or the debossed side right like you can use either side of this and it's gonna give you such great texture I'm actually gonna use the side that's sticking up more embossed or does that just, I don't know. It's one of those. <laughs> but I'm gonna use this side where it's sticking up and give it a look. And we're just gonna take, um, again, our, our adhesive, and we're just gonna go around the edges. Um, the trick with anything you emboss is to make sure uh, that you get around the edges really good. You want a really good seal around those edges because it'll kind of stick up a little bit if you don't get a good enough seal. So we're gonna take that. And because we only cut it an eighth of an inch difference, that is for early espresso is just kind of sticking out on the edge there to just give us a little bit of color. So that cinnamon cider was cut to two and seven eighths by four and one eighth. So it just kind of gives it a little bit on the edge there, right? Oh, I love it. What do you think about that embossing folder? That's gonna be one of my new favorites, I'm pretty sure. Hi. 
Carrie. Hi, Carol. Hi, Joan. Nice to see you all. Hi, Cami. Make sure you comment in the comments and that way you get entered into our awesome monthly drawings. Don't want to miss that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take some more of the, I'll show you these real quick. So these are the World Map dies. So this is the die set that comes with the bundle or the suite. I love these. So you've got just your regular circle here. So I went ahead and actually already punched that out. This is Misty Moonlight. Um, so I already ran that through the die cut machine. And it gives you a perfect circle. I imagine I'm gonna use that for a lot of other things, not just for these dies. Um, they're great to match up with your worlds because uh, they fit just perfect with these two sides of the world. And I love it because you've got both, um, both hemispheres, right? You've got the, wait, these are not hemispheres. You've got both, anyway, you've got North and South America over here. You've got Europe and Asia and Africa over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can see that on both of them and then you have this awesome stand and we cut that out as well so I used some early espresso again to cut that out and it's nice because it has a embossed effect on it too so it gives it a little more detail you've got kind of the swirl here you've got the ink quill um, and then the ink bottle um, you've got a smaller stand too so if you just want to cut a smaller stand for your globe, you don't have to have the big stand on there. Um, you've got some texturing dies here, and then this is actually script. So if you were to die cut into this, you get kind of a script effect on your paper. It looks really cool. We will play with that later for sure. Um, another life. So I went ahead and used the dies to cut out. So we got our stand for the world. We have the backdrop for the world, which I did in Misty Moonlight because I wanted to have the water effect. And then I went ahead and die cut the North and South America piece. And I did this in our new brass foil. So love, love, love the brass foil. One of the tricks when you are die cutting these is you'll notice there's a ton of little pieces that still stick out. And so I like to have my picket tool. It has two tools on the end. One is kind of a flat tool and the other is a very sharp little pokey tool. It is great for getting these tiny little pieces out. One of the other things that we now have is we now have adhesive sheets that you can run your dies through. And so um, I do have mine on order. So hopefully I'll be able to show those with you, share those with you soon. Um, but you can actually put the adhesive sheet on the back, you're going to pull up and it's going to keep all these little pieces stuck that you're not using because it got cut. And then it's actually going to provide adhesive on the back of all these intricate cut dies. So you don't have to worry about gluing them. That is such a pain. Um, trying to glue everything and I'll show you in just a minute when we try and glue it out here. Um, and we glue this down that sometimes it's kind of a pain to get all the glue on there. So there we go. We've got these all out. Just double check here. I love, love, love this tool. It makes everything easy. I am impatiently waiting for our new die cut machine that Stampin' Up! has now come out with. So that's going to be available at the end of summer or early fall. Um, you know, this COVID thing kind of put a damper on some of the production. So we're still waiting on that tool. But once I get it, I promise you I'll be showing you that. Um, and actually the mini machine, our new mini machine will be perfect for this because I can run it right through really quick, um, fold it back up and have it ready to go. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue on the back here and get this stuck down. And again, this is why those adhesive sheets would be so nice. All I would be doing right now is just pulling the backing off and sticking it right down because the adhesive would already be stuck on it. So we definitely can't wait to get those. And I'll be sharing those with you as soon as I get them. But for now, liquid glue will work just fine. Not ideal, but it'll stick. 
and we're going to stick that down to the world. That misty moonlight piece we just cut out. Love it. All right, once you've got that stuck, we're going to go ahead and then adhere down our stand. We're going to do that kind of in the center. So I use my globe to sort of help me figure out where that center is going to be. Make sure I'm gluing the correct side here. All right, so just a little bit of liquid glue on this. This is another one where I wish I had the uh, that adhesive backed sticky because that would make this one so much easier. Here's the trick with this one. When you're gluing it down, don't put glue on that top rim. We're gonna slide the globe down in. So you're gonna need to make sure that's not stuck to your paper. So I'm just gonna kind of check and see where I want that to be. Okay, that looks like a good spot. Take my globe out of there. And I'm just gonna stick this down. Give it a little pressure so it's that glue dries. Now you can see, oops, let the glue dry a little more. I can just slide my globe right in here, gently. And the nice thing is once you've got it slid in there, you can kind of turn it the way you want it. Um, so I'm gonna put a little adhesive on the back, not a lot, just enough to make sure it sticks. Mm, my adhesive's giving me a hard time today. There we go. Slide that in there. And then just play with it till you get it kind of the way you want it. Oh. There we go. All right. So I've got my globe down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little embellishments to it. Remember, this is kind of a more masculine card, so I'm not going to put any frilly bows or little jewels on it. Um, this would be a great, um, the sentiments I chose for this card I think would be great for like retirement, um, a nice retirement card for someone. So I'm going to use our faux suede, and you can't feel it. I wish you could feel it through the camera because it is so soft. And it's that early espresso color. But you can see when it's against the early espresso color here, it actually has more of that suede look to it. It really does have a very different look. And so it's gonna give, it just gives a little something to your card. I'm gonna cut just enough to tie a knot over on the side here. And I'm going to take my knot all the way over to the left. So, let's see. There we go. And you want that knot to show, so I'm going to try and tease it out here a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's just going to give me a bad time, isn't it? All right. Flip it over. <laughs> Might need to redo my knot here. There. Just flip my knot over. All right, play with that a little more. I'm going to cut this down. And I'm going to go ahead after I figure out how to make my knot cooperate. There we go. Sometimes you just got to play with the ribbon. I find that when I'm making bows, sometimes the first try just doesn't always work out. So there we go. I like that. Um, then I'm going to cut a small piece of Whisper White and we're just going to cut that down to three, no that's not right, to one and a quarter by two and a half. I might need to even cut this down even more. Let me check. Yep, I cut that down to one. So that's one inch by two and a half inches. And we're gonna stamp our sentiment right on there. So now I'm gonna get out 
this awesome cinnamon cider. It's so pretty. Again, it was the brown I never knew I needed. I just love it. So we're gonna use Adventure Awaits from our stamp set. We're just gonna stamp that in the center. There we go. Isn't that a great color? I love this color. I'm telling you, didn't know that I needed it, but I did. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the center of our card. So the center of our card is three and a half by four and three quarters. So we're gonna stamp that center and we're gonna use the congratulations on this new beginning. And I thought that would be like, I don't know, somebody who's moving. That would be awesome for somebody who's relocating, maybe starting a new job, um, somebody who's retiring. Just a nice sentiment that can be used for multiple things, which is great. That's what you want when you get sentiments. You want something that is universal. It can be used for lots of different things, which this stamp set has. Um, we're gonna use the other side of the globe. So we're gonna use Asia, Africa. I see Australia down here. Since we've got the North America and South America on this side, and we're gonna stamp that up, ink that up. And remember when you're using our ink pads, you don't have to press very hard. They're super squishy and super juicy. So I'm just tapping the top. I'm not putting a lot of weight on it. I'm just tapping it a couple times and then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp. Um, make sure when you stamp, you're stamping on something like paper or something that you can easily wipe off because we're gonna stamp off on this one, which means we're just gonna stamp a little bit off of the paper. There you go. So when I move it, you can see it's not perfectly on the paper there. There we go. Gotta put the ink away. If I don't, my fingers will end up in it and make a huge mess. It's always what happens. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the inside of the card. So we'll get the inside going here. There's plenty of room to write your sentiment and to sign your card. But you definitely need something on the inside unless you're gonna use our white chalk marker. So our white chalk marker is awesome. Uh, it writes beautifully on this darker colored paper and you get a nice white um, chalk effect when you use it to write with. So that's our special this month. So if you do place an order of $50 or more with me, um, that's gonna be the thing that comes in the package for you and I'll ship that um, out to you. Usually I ship with a nice little card too and a thank you. So, um, but you do have to put in the host code. So our host code is the Z79S9PGH. So if you're placing an order, um, make sure you put in that host code so you can get all your goodies. Don't want you to miss out on goodies ever ever. Alright, we're going to go ahead and get some adhesive on this. Get this stuck down here. So I'm just putting adhesive on the back of our globe before I put our sentiment on it. And I'm just going to kind of push it up to the top right of the card. You could center this too if you wanted. It's kind of your whatever your preference is. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's whatever you like. Oh, I just love that embossing folder. Love, love, love it. All right, I'm gonna finish this off with some dimensionals. Of course, I put them somewhere. There they are. All right. So we're just gonna add a couple of dimensionals to our adventure await. And one in the middle there too. Love Stampin' Dimensionals. It just gives it a little something, right? A little something extra. And we're gonna kinda tuck that over toward the right hand side too. It's not gonna be perfectly centered, 
And that's okay, because that knot is kind of there, keeping it from being perfectly centered. And that's okay. It's kind of how you want it. Right, take that knot on top. Perfect. All right. That is our Adventure Awaits card. I love, love, love this globe. That brass looks so amazing on there. So, can't wait to find someone to give this to. So, is anybody moving? Anybody getting a new job or maybe retiring? I'll be happy to send this your way. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Let me get our next card ready here. All right, and we're gonna use some more of that designer series paper because, again, it is gorgeous and I love it. I cannot get enough. And this time we're gonna use a white card stock card base. So this is just our regular Whisper White. It's cut to eight and a half by four and a quarter. And we're just gonna fold that in half. I always like to use my bone folder to score it. Make sure it has a nice score on there. I think it was Joan, I know you're on here, showed me that you can use our blocks too because our blocks are rounded on the edge. They're not gonna hurt to score it with. It's gonna actually um, be okay to score it because it's not gonna be a harsh edge. So I thought that was a great idea. So if you don't have a bone folder but you do have a block, that's a great way to do it. We're gonna go ahead and use that embossing folder again. So we're gonna do a little bit of, um, we're gonna do some white on white here, but we're gonna do it with our embossing folder. So I've cut this white cardstock down, and this is um, four by five and a quarter. So I just cut it down half a, a quarter inch on each side. And I'm gonna run it through that embossing folder again. So I wanna give it that textured look that same embossing folder. Love that tattered paper look. I have a feeling I'm using this particular embossing folder quite a bit. And again, I'm going to flip it over so it has the, uh, the embossed side so it's kind of sticking out and you can see how it just gives it a really cool effect on the white paper, right? You're doing the white paper on the white paper. It's great to do with all kinds of colors. You could do a black with something black embossed or a pink with something pink embossed on top of it. It just gives it a different, a different look. So I'm gonna set that aside and we'll build those together here in just a minute. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some of our papers out. So there's gonna be a lot of layers on this card, but it looks so pretty when it's all finished. So we're gonna start with our Misty Moonlight. This again is one of our new ink colors. And so we're gonna be using the Misty Moonlight pad today as well. So pretty. And we're gonna cut the Misty Moonlight to three and a quarter by four and a half. So we're gonna cut it down quite a bit. Then we're gonna cut our white out. So we're gonna take a piece of Whisper White and we're gonna cut that down to three and one eighth by four and three eighths. So we're gonna go down an eighth of an inch each increment. And our last one is our designer series paper. So gorgeous. Look at that brass foil on there. So oh, I love the other side too, always torn. Um, but that other, that side is gorgeous. So we're gonna cut that down to th three by four and a quarter. And so we're gonna just layer those on top of each other here. And I always start smallest to biggest. I don't know if that's the right way. That's just the easiest for me as I start thinking about layering it on. So give it some adhesive. All right, I might just pull my snail out. I don't know what's going on with this one. Um, I'm trying really hard to play with my new adhesive. I just don't think I hold it right. I think that's my problem. I've got to figure out how to hold it so that it does what I want it to do. Because <laughs> once it sticks down, I love it. You know, it's just getting used to something new. All right, so I'm going to carefully layer this on top, and it's only an eighth of an inch. So as you're layering it, just know it's going to have a really small edge. 
and that's because we just want a little bit of that pop of white to come out. We just want a little bit of pop of color. So we're just going to give it a little bit of a color here. I'm getting a little crazy with the adhesive now. Probably didn't need quite that much. All right. And then we're going to, the nice thing is you'll be able to see this a little better when we put it on the Misty Moonlight. So now you can see just a little bit of that Misty Moonlight is going to show through. And just, ah. It always looks so nice when you layer them up, right? All right, and that's, I'm gonna set those aside for now too. And now I'm gonna get a piece of white cardstock out. And we're gonna stamp right on our piece of white cardstock. So, I don't know if you're like me at all, but I have a lot of extras just laying around. <laughs> so I've got all kinds of bits and pieces of stuff I've used in the past. So I keep them in bags. I use a lot of white, so that's why I have a lot of little extra pieces of white laying around. It's probably the most popular I have. So grab a piece of scrap paper, whatever you need, um, and we're gonna go ahead and stamp, you make the world a better place. And we're just gonna stamp that right onto our Whisper White. And we're gonna stamp first and then die cut. And the reason we're going to stamp first and then die cut is because if you notice the size of our die cut versus the size of our sentiment, uh, it's pretty much exact, right? So we need to make sure that we're, this will give us um, the ability to cut it exactly where we want to cut it so that we can see the entire sentiment. So stamp first and then, and then run it through your die cutter. So again, I'm just going to gently press a couple times. This is such a pretty blue. Ah, I love that color. It's like denim almost. That's what it reminds me of, a dark denim. Such a pretty one. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the circle die cut, the same one from our set. I feel like I can use a circle die cut for all kinds of things, I'm telling you. And I'm going to make sure it's lined up exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to run it through my die cut machine, which is right over here. Do that quickly here. All right. Uh, the green tape I'm using, in case you're curious, is post-it tape. Um, there is something else called purple tape that's really good. Um, post-it tape I love. I, I can use it over and over again. It doesn't stick to my paper. It doesn't get caught in my um, die cut uh, or my die cut machine. So I use it a lot for a lot of stuff. Um, but if you don't have it, if you don't have something like that around, um, Washi tape works really good. I think it was Carrie telling me that on one of the lives a few weeks ago. So thank you, Carrie. And then um, just an old post-it note. Sometimes I just take the adhesive part of the post-it note um, and stick it down on there. So you, you use what you have. That's, that's my motto anyway. Use what you got. Don't worry about the rest of it. All right, we're gonna put this all together now. And I'm just gonna use some adhesive. Remember when you're using adhesive on your um, on your embossed image, you definitely want to make sure that you go all the way around the edges because they will kind of stick up if you don't have enough adhesive around all the edges of your embossing. And this is where you gotta kind of eyeball it real good. Ooh, I love the feel even when I run my hand across it. It's such a cool folder. And it just gives it a little bit of texture, right? It's not it's not crazy, it's not jumping out at you. It's just, just giving you a little something, which I like. I'm gonna use some um, Stampin' Dimensionals on this side and pop it up. Okay. 
And I'm just going to center this right on the card. So. Love, love, love our Stampin' Dimensionals. I use them a lot. You get a ton. And we have two sizes. We have a mini and we have a regular. Honestly, I don't use the mini much. Um, because if I need like a little bit, I'll just cut one in half. <laughs> that works for me too. <laughs> just cut it in half. It works. All right. So we're going to center that on the card, right on the front, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my sentiment here right on the front. I could have added that before I put that down too, um, but we're just going to use adhesive to add that right to the card front. And that's it. We're not going to go crazy. Like I said, I think this set especially is good for any type of masculine card that you make. Um, but this has so much texture in the background. Uh, I didn't want to put a whole lot else. I thought, you know, you can wrap a ribbon around it. You can do that. But once you actually, and it's hard and I know sometimes on the camera, it's hard to see, but that white embossing looks so good it just kind of gives it a something a little extra so these are our cards for today and again if you're looking for that sweet it is probably pull it up here again so it's that world of good sweet that's going to be on page 24 in your catalog it is awesome definitely check that out um, I love every, everything that's in that suite. So it really is amazing. Um, and then we used two of our brand new in colors today. So we used, um, our cinnamon cider, that gorgeous brown you didn't even know you needed, but you do. And that misty moonlight, which is that denim blue, which is exactly the blue I needed, right? I feel like I've got a million blues, but I didn't have this one. Um, Right now, I am running a special on all of our in colors. So if you want to join our in color club, our in color club is only $25 a month and it's for five months. And each month you get a different in color and it includes things like the ink pad, ribbon, cardstock, um, designer paper, all kinds of really cool stuff for each month. So you're going to get a whole pack from me in the mail. Um, of one color, including um, we have some enamel dots that match each color. Um, so if you'd like to sign up for that, definitely click on um, the link over to your left that says events. There should be one there for the in color. Um, or you can go to our blog and sign up there as well. Um, but these are awesome. Uh, it's nice to get a present every month. It feels like Christmas, right? You get a present in the mail. I love when presents come uh, in the mail. And so every month you'll get all kinds of new things. And then the last month, which would be November, um, you're going to get some extra goodies in your package as well. So let me know if you're interested in that in color. I'd love to sign you up for that. Also, if there's anything I can help you with, please let me know. Um, hopefully this is inspiring you. If you have created something, um, been inspired by any of these videos, if you could like and share, I would greatly appreciate it. That just helps others see my post. Facebook likes to see all those little likes, those little thumbs up, those little hearts. Um, if they see more of those, they share it with more people. So thank you for all of you for watching. I so appreciate you. Um, feel free again, make sure you comment and um, say hello. Let me know you were there so I can get you entered into our drawing this month. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to see you guys in person someday again. I know we're, we're still doing lots of social distancing. Just know I think about you all the time. Um, you've been on my prayers for sure and I hope everything is going well. Um, I sure miss you all. So when we can have class together again, um, I am looking forward to it. We'll be celebrating for sure. So thank you all. Have an amazing, amazing time. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carrie. 
Oh, uh, yep, Joan, that that ribbon is awesome. Well, thank you guys. Blessings to all of you. I miss you all so much. Have a really, really wonderful weekend. Bye, guys.